Today I'm going to show you the easiest and fastest way to install Clipper on your Ender 3 V2 Neo Edition. For this installation we'll be using a Raspberry Pi 4 B model, which I got from Raztech. There will be a link in the description below where you can pick up one of these too, especially now that the price is starting to come down on these. Before I get started on this install, you might be wondering, why am I using a Raspberry Pi 4 when there are cheaper alternative options out there? Well, I do have an Orange Pi Zero 2 installed in my uh, CR5 Pro H over there, and that's been running fine, but I also want to get this project done quickly, and I use this printer pretty often, so the easiest way to get Clipper installed is with a Raspberry Pi. Not to mention, I can also have multiple instances of Clipper on this, whereas that's a lot more difficult to do with an Orange Pi Zero 2, and it might not run as well. So we're going to go with the tried and true platform that the Raspberry Pi 4 is. So I went for the Raztec kit specifically because it comes with everything I need. It comes with this Raspberry Pi 4 with 4 gigs of RAM, comes with a case, although you can of course print out your own case and make it suited for your printer, but I want this on the outside because I do plan on running multiple instances of Clipper on this. Cooling fan, power supply, makes things a little bit easier. HDMI cables, which um, we won't be needing for this installation, but it's cool it comes with it just in case you're using this as a media server or something. An SD card, which we'll definitely be using for main sale. Heat sinks to help it stay nice and cool. And of course a card reader, which will come in handy for that SD card. So before we get started, let's prepare our Raspberry Pi 4. We'll take it out of the box here and we'll get our heat sink set on. When applying heat sinks, I always like to use an alcohol pad. It's not necessary, but it does help promote better adhesion, which is something you're gonna want. And again, this Raztec kit already comes with heat sinks and all the ones you're gonna need. So now that the alcohol has dried up, we're gonna take our largest heat sink here and we're gonna put it onto the processor here and just press that firmly, but not too firm for about 30 seconds. Then we're gonna take the next largest one, peel off the adhesive protector there, and then we're going to apply it to the RAM over here. Same thing, about 30 seconds. Then we're going to take the third largest one, peel off the adhesive protection on that, and then we're gonna put it over here on the USB controller. And it definitely helps if your fingers are a bit smaller than mine. We're going to take the small seat sink, or the fourth largest if we continue my trend here, and we're going to put it on the Ethernet controller. And this would be where it comes in handy if you definitely have tinier hands. Because this is going to be difficult, or a pair of pliers would be helpful. But, yeah, perfect. There we go. Press that on there for another 30 seconds, and then we'll get to the next bit. Now we're going to take a case here. Take this top part off, and we're going to screw the Raspberry Pi in like this, being mindful of where the I.O. ports are going to be just over here. If you go with this kit as well, now would be a great time to screw the board into the case, but for the purpose of this video, I'm not going to do that. However, I am going to screw the fan onto this. And the way I'll put the fan is it will be blowing air onto there and venting throughout the case. But before I screw everything down, I'm just going to make sure everything test fits properly. And for fan power, we're going to be using this pin here for 5 volts and this pin here for ground. This will make sure that the fan's on all the time on 5 volts. If you wanted to, you could probably depin this and then put your own connectors on or run this however you want if you want to control this with 3 volts instead of 5. But for the purposes of this, I'm going to be running it at 5 volts because noise isn't really a concern for me. Of course, you'll do this when you have this part of the case on. But I just want to show you where it's going to go. So this is kind of what it will look like before we pop the top part on. And we're going to have the fan facing this way so it's blowing air onto the components here. We'll snap this all into place. Now that it's all snapped into place, there will be a gap here which will allow for more airflow. And just in case you're wondering, the SD card slot is still accessible with this case. So let's put this aside for now, grab our SD card, pop it in the computer, and do what we need to from there. So now that we're on the computer side of things, we're going to head over to docs.mainsale.xyz. There'll be a link in the description below so you can follow along as well. We're going to be installing Mainsail OS. And to do that, we're just going to go over to installation here. We're going to go to Mainsail OS right here. And we're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page. Getting started. Raspberry Pi models for this. And the nice thing about this Raztec kit is it does come with a 32 gigabyte class a1 sd card from sandisk so we're just going to scroll down here to raspberry pi imager and then we're going to download it for windows and once it's finished downloading we'll just pop it open here install we'll finish it here and let's pop back over to main sale here and then we'll follow along with the instructions here so we're going to click choose os then we're going to go to other specific purpose os and click 3d printing and then we're going to go to main sale. And then we're going to be using the recommended. You can either use the 64-bit or 32-bit. 
there's not really going to be much benefit if you're going to use 64-bit with your Raspberry Pi 4. But we'll just go with 32, and then we're going to choose our storage here, the 32 gigabyte SD card. And then before we click right, we're going to hit this little gear icon here. We're going to set our host name, and for this we're just going to say Ender3v2neo.local. We're going to enable SSH, and we're going to put the password, or we're going to put the username here as Pi, just to make things easier. Password, you can choose any password you'd like. I'm going to choose that one. I'm going to configure the wireless LAN. Here you'll enter the password for your Wi-Fi. And then here your wireless LAN country. We're not in Great Britain. We are here in the US. So just choose the country of where you're going to be. We're going to set our locale here. That's about right. Okay, and we can keep those settings here as is. Save. And now we're going to hit write. Yep. This will just take a few minutes to write, so I'm going to go ahead and skip through this. You may get some windows popping up saying to please insert a disk into whatever drive letter was just in here. And that's to be expected because the card was just ejected from the program. We're going to hit continue here and then we can close out of the Raspberry Pi imager. And now we can head down to first boot. So if you have extra peripherals, you can go ahead and read through the documentation here to see what to do. But I'm going to have mine just as is and... Let's take the SD card out and head back over to the Raspberry Pi. So now that you've got your installation of Mainsail OS on this SD card, we're going to pop this down into here on our Raspberry Pi. And just make sure your SD card's in there nice and good. And then we're going to take our power and plug it in. So this is powered through USB-C here. The fan is running and you can see the, LED, the green LED indicating SD card activity. And once it starts flashing, kind of intermittently here, we'll know that this is ready to go and we can head back over to the computer and then check everything out. So this might take a few minutes depending on the size of the SD card that you use. With this kit, this should take only about two or three minutes. And as we head back over to the computer for the second time, we're gonna need to take an SD card with us because we're gonna have to flash Clipper onto this printer. And to do that, we need to make a config file to put on this. And I just plugged this SD card into the computer I'm just going to go ahead and format it, make sure it's FAT32, and we're done there. And now we're going to need to go into Mainsail OS, and we're going to try to get onto it by using the host name we just gave it. And this is what I named mine, so this is where I'll come to use it. So now when you get into mainsail, you might see some errors here, and that's quite all right, because we don't have any configuration set yet. But before we do anything, we're gonna go over to machine. We're going to check for updates for everything by coming over here and checking the update manager. Now that's checked everything, we can see there's some updates here. So we're gonna go ahead and update all components. This should just take a few minutes to do. All right, everything's just been updated. This might take about a minute to reboot. So we can try again. And it looks like our updates are done. Great. So we're going to hit close out here. And it does not have a printer.config, so it's probably freaking out a little bit. There's a couple ways we can put this on here. We can use an FTP service, or an easier way is we can just add a new file. We're going to call it printer.cfg. We're going to hit create. So now we're going to go into printer.cfg and we have this blank file. Fortunately, there are smarter people than I am out there and they've already created a file for the Ender 3 V2 Neo. It can be easily found at the link in the description below. So we're going to go over this GitHub, which again, the link will be in the description below. We're going to copy everything in here and then we're going to go paste, control V. Everything here looks good. This is just kind of default for if you haven't changed anything on your Ender 3 V2 Neo. So here we're going to do save and restart and you'll get this error message here when you start back up, which is totally fine because we have not connected the Ender 3 V2 Neo yet to the Raspberry Pi 4. But before we do that, we, first we have to make Clipper firmware to flash onto the printer itself. And to do that, we're going to go into PuTTY and there will be a link in the description below for PuTTY. And when you launch it, this is what you have. And in PuTTY, what you can do is you can connect by IP, which I always prefer. And fortunately, this tells you what the IP address is on your local network. So we're going to go put that in there. And it will be port 22. And to make things easier in the future, I'm just going to put Ender 3 V2 here. And I'm going to hit save. 
So I can always just go back to this in the future, hit open, and you might get something like this. That's okay, we're gonna hit accept, because I do trust this. I'm gonna go pi is the username we selected before, and we're gonna put the password in that we had chosen earlier, and you'll get this menu. What we're gonna need to do is go over to the clipper directory, and to do that, you can just type cd tilde forward slash clipper, enter, and now we're in the clipper directory. From here, you can type in make menu config, and we're going to not enable extra low level options. For this, we can find all this information over here in this GitHub file or in the printer.config since you just pasted it over there. We're going to make sure that this is the correct architecture, correct processor model, correct bootloader offset, and then for communication interface, we're gonna hit enter. And as this says over here, we're going to be using serial UART PA10 and PA9. We're going to highlight this and then hit enter and everything looks good there. So what we'll do is we're gonna hit Q on the keyboard, then hit Y, and then we're gonna issue the command make and hit enter. That's just gonna take a few minutes to do. Well, it's building out the firmware file. We can also get a program called Core FTP, or if you have another FTP program you like to use, you can use that as well. So I'm going to go over to my site manager here and I'm going to come up with a new site and we're gonna call this one Ender3v2 Neo. Doesn't really matter what you call it there and we're gonna put the IP address in. And again, we can grab that by going over here. Can highlight this, Control C. Control V into there, username is going to be pi and the password that you used before. These look all good here. We're gonna hit connect. We can hit yes for that. And then you have all your files that are on the Raspberry Pi here. So we're gonna go over to Clipper and out and here we've got Clipper.bin. So what we're gonna do with this file is we're going to download the file. And once you have it downloaded on your local workstation, It'll just download in your default download location, but you can also specify where you'd like it downloaded here as well. So we're going to locate our file, which is this one here. We're gonna right click it and then hit copy. And then we're gonna go over to our USB drive. We're going to hit paste. The good thing is with the Creality boards, they don't really care what the firmware's name is, as long as it's a bin file and as long as it's not the same bin file that was used for the last flash. And I guarantee you if it's a new Ender 3 V2 Neo and it's never had Clipper on it before, Clipper.bin will work just fine. So now with this file on here, we can close this out, take the SD card out, and go back over to the Raspberry Pi. And now that we have our firmware on the SD card, we're going to put it into the printer. But before we turn it on, we're going to unplug the screen just for safety. Back here, there's a little plug which you can just kind of wiggle out and we'll put the printer back where it was. Some boards will prevent Clipper being flashed if the screen's connected, but we're not gonna be using the screen anyway, so it's fine to leave it unplugged. So now the SD card's in, the screen's unplugged. We're gonna hit the power switch, should see this go. Give it about a minute. It should only take a few seconds to flash, but once you've given it about a minute to be sure, we're gonna take a micro USB to USB-A cable, plug it into one of the USB ports on the Raspberry Pi, and then we're gonna plug it into the main board over here. So it's been about a minute. We can leave the SD card in or we can take it out. At this point, it doesn't really matter, but we're going to plug in the Raspberry Pi 4 here and head back over to the computer. And back in PuTTY, we can check to see if the MCU is being detected by the Raspberry Pi. So to do that, we can type in ls forward slash dev, forward slash serial, forward slash buy hyphen ID, hit enter. And we're going to get this USB uh, serial thing here. And that is the default. We can leave it there because that will already be in the config. But if you want, you can copy it and then open up printer.cfg. We're gonna scroll down to MCU and we're going to see that it's the same here, which it looks like it is. Okay, so we're just gonna save and restart because we need to restart it anyway. We're gonna see that the MCU here, which is the Creality main board, is connected. So what we can do here is we can go back to dashboard and we can see there's some warnings issued here about these things not being defined in config. And the easiest way to do that is to make sure you include main sale config in our printer.config file. How do you do that? You go over to here to machine and then you see you've got mainsale.cfg. We're going to go click on printer.cfg and in our config file, we can just do the following bracket 
include main sale.cfg and then it will have the close bracket for you save and restart all that does is say in this printer got dot config we're going to reference this file here we'll go to the dashboard and we have none of those warnings anymore because now we have all the commands that we need so what we're going to do let's click the home button and see what happens on the printer If you followed along to every step so far, and your printer just homed, congratulations, your Ender 3 V2 Neo is now running Clipper. So overall, this whole process should only take you about 15 to 30 minutes, especially if you're using the Raztec Raspberry Pi 4 kit that I mentioned earlier in this video and I've shown throughout it. Again, there will also be a link in the description below as to where you can buy one because it comes with pretty much everything you need to get this installed done quickly. If you want to see some more cool things like tuning pressure advance and input shaper on this, then leave a comment below and let me know and I'll do a video on it as well. So thank you guys so much for watching and thank you Raztec for making an awesome product. So remember to hit the subscribe button, like the video if you like it, dislike it if you didn't. Tell me what your thoughts are in the comments below and remember as always, keep it foul.